day, my wizard friends, we will slay the silicone dragon. In this video, I'm going to explain how to pour a one-piece silicone block mold. This is in a series of videos where I go over the mold making and resin casting process. So we're taking a mold of this little cast resin figure here. It's a super simple piece, so it's perfect for this type of mold. We're going to make a little mold box for it, pour the silicone, then cut it open and pull the piece out so we can cast resin into the mold. So the first thing I'm going to do is mount it to a board. And what I'm using here is just a cabinet grade plywood. That just means that it's uh, sealed and super smooth. Um, silicone will not stick to this surface, especially if I put a little mold release onto it. If the board is porous, uh, silicone will stick to it and it'll be a lot harder to pull the mold off of the board. So smooth board. Um, and then there's a couple things I'm going to do uh, before I mount it to the board. The first thing is to attach this uh, super thin little piece of wood uh, to the bottom of the piece. So this little piece of wood will be sandwiched uh, between the piece and the board. Um, and I'll explain the purpose of this later when I get to the casting and finishing part. Next I mark the line where I will be cutting the mold open. This is the line that I will actually try to follow with the scalpel when I'm opening the mold up. I like to ghost it on with a pencil and then I'll fine tune it a little bit and then I'll come back over it with a, a fat sharpie. The most important thing here is to make sure that wherever the line is drawn, the piece is going to pop out of the mold uh, relatively easy. The silicone is very flexible, so there is a lot of wiggle room there, but you just want to make sure that there aren't any parts of the sculpture that get stuck in there. I always try to split the piece evenly down the middle, um, so I have two even halves to the mold. This just gives you a mold that uh, fits well together and it's just kind of like a, a solid construction when each half is the same size. Another thing I do is I try to follow a path here that's going to be the easiest uh, to clean up. Wherever this black line is here, that's where you're going to get a little bit of flashing uh, after you pour the resin. So uh, this is always going to be uh, where you're cleaning something up with either an X-Acto knife or some sandpaper. Uh, this is a good example right here. If there's a little bit of flashing on the tip of this, uh, it's going to be a lot easier to clean up than if the flashing went down into this little creviced area. So I glue the wooden disc onto the bottom of the piece using this Loctite Gel Crazy Glue. You want to use a thin glue here because you don't want to create any gaps between the wood and the piece or the mold board. So don't use a glue stick for this. That will not give you a tight fit. Then I use the glue again to attach it to the mold board. And then using a sharpie in this transparent T-square, I'll draw a box or a rectangle around the piece. And this will be the dimensions of my mold box and mold. I try to keep all of my molds nice and blocky. When it comes time to rubber band the mold up and pour resin into it, a nice block mold just seems very efficient. And this will be a pretty solid block of silicone uh, for this small piece. Um, but I prefer to overbuild all of my molds. Um, if they're a little bit thicker, I think they just hold uh, together a little bit better and they're just a little bit more structurally sound. They have less of a tendency uh, to kind of uh, wiggle around and deform. I used to try to make all of my molds as small and as tight uh, as possible to save money on silicone. But honestly, for a little bit more money, uh, you get a little bit bigger of a mold and in the long run it will save you a little bit of aggravation as well as cleanup. And you'll see that I try to give about an inch of space in between the figure and the outside of the mold. So the next step is to take these dimensions and build a mold box that will fit around this piece. And that's what this is right here. A very easy and efficient mold box uh, made out of foam core. So I just did a video not long ago where I go through this whole process of making this box step by step. So if you want to see how this is done, check that out. Uh, there's a link in the description. Um, but now what we're going to do is we're just going to glue this around the piece and then mix up the silicone and pour the mold. 
Make sure you run a solid bead of glue around the bottom of the box. You really want to make sure it's completely attached to the board. The silicone will find the tiniest pinhole to leak out of. I'm using a Ryobi cordless glue gun here. This thing has become a studio essential for me. It's a little pricey, but having cords run all over the studio drives me crazy. And it looks a little funny here because it's been modified to fit a DeWalt battery. But if you want to check it out, there's a link in the description. I love this thing. So now we are going to mix and pour the silicone. And I am using a product by SmoothOn called Moldstar 15. This is a two-part platinum cure silicone rubber. We have part A here and part B here. You mix these in equal amounts uh, by volume, uh, let it cure for a handful of hours, and then you end up with this nice light blue uh, flexible silicone rubber. All the little blue specks you see in the rubber, this is all recycled uh, bits of old molds that I use to kind of conserve silicone. I'll talk about that. Uh, in a little bit. This is a gallon kit. You can also get them in pints, but this stuff has a uh, pretty long shelf life. So if you think you're going to be making a few molds, uh, you definitely get a price break when you buy the gallon containers. First get some of these mixing containers with all these little measurements on the side here. These containers make it super easy to measure and pour the silicone. You can clean them out afterwards with a little bit of denatured alcohol. Um, I usually have a few different sizes in my studio. I have the two and a half quart here, uh, the one quart here, and then the 16 ounce here. So an easy way to find the volume of this container is to fill it with rice. Give it a little shake, make sure it gets in all the little nooks and crannies, and then pour that rice back into one of the measuring containers. Give it a little shake to level it out, and then I can see here that the volume is one and a half liters. So I know that I'll need three quarters of a liter of part A and three quarters of a liter part B. Whenever I use this system, I always feel like it's a little bit on the short side. So I always end up mixing a little bit more just to top it off a bit. But I'm going to be adding bits of old recycled molds. So the rice thing doesn't really work here. I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. Make sure you stir well before using. What happens is this stuff will settle the longer it sits. So sometimes you could end up with this kind of thick uh, peanut butter-like texture at the bottom of the bucket that you need to scrape up and then mix in with everything else. I do this thing where I scrape it off the bottom and then I kind of spread it onto the side of the bucket and kind of squish it apart there and then mix it back up with everything else. This can take a little bit of time, but it's super important that this is mixed well. So the plan is to pour this in layers. I'm going to mix up the silicone. I'll pour a layer into here, throw in some of these little recycled bits, another layer, more bits, and really just keep uh, building it up layer by layer. I'm really trying to, I mean, there's a huge cavity in here that I'm planning on filling uh, with the silicone, recycled silicone, and then I'll have a lot more of it up top around here. I'm also going to be pouring this in two different batches. I am going to give the first batch uh, a little bit of time up to here to kind of set up and lock all of these little things in place, and then I'll come on top with the second batch uh, and finish it off. Before I start mixing the silicone, I'll give the box and sculpture a really light spray with this Smooth On Universal Mold Release. This will just help everything pop off the silicone a little bit when you pull all this stuff apart. And for this piece, it's probably not totally necessary. Everything that is sticking to the silicone here, the board, the foam core, and the resin sculpture, it's all a smooth, uh, non-porous surface. So it's going to pop off of the silicone. Uh, the mold release just makes it pop out a little bit easier. This is a great general purpose mold release by SmoothOn. I highly recommend it. Uh, just make sure you wear a respirator. So the first batch is going to be 16 ounces of silicone, which is right here. So I'm going to start by pouring in 8 ounces of part A, then I'm going to fill it up to 16 with part B, and then mix it. So I always pour the blue in first, which is actually part B. This way I can follow this nice little blue line up until it hits exactly 8 ounces. 
Then I pour the white towards the back side of the cup so I can keep an eye on the little blue line all the way up to 16 ounces. Make sure to really scrape the sides and the bottom of the container really well when you're mixing. I like to degas all of my silicone with this apparatus here. This is a process that removes all of the tiny little air bubbles in the silicone. You place the silicone in this pot, you put the lid on, and then you turn this little pump on and you're essentially creating a vacuum chamber that's sucking all of the air out of this pot and out of your silicone. I'm creating a separate video for this process because there's so much information here, but if you plan on uh, casting a lot of resin, uh, degassing your silicone as well as pressure casting your resin is really a game changer. But if you're just starting out, chances are you aren't going to have this equipment. So let's go back to this point here and pretend we're doing this whole thing without the vacuum chamber. If you're not using the vacuum chamber, a good technique for pouring the silicone into the box is to start in the corner and lift the pour cup super high. And this will also help remove some of the air bubbles. In theory, what's happening here, as the little air bubbles come down this super long waterfall, they get stretched out and they'll pop. And you can actually see this with some of the bigger air bubbles, but it won't get all the tiny microscopic bubbles that the vacuum chamber will get. It's also nice that the silicone kind of slowly and uniformly covers the piece as it rises up to the top of the box. At this point, my silicone is about an inch deep, and now I'm going to add some bits of recycled molds just to save a little bit of money. And I'm actually going to do a separate video on this process too, because there's just so much to go over. But in a nutshell, I've chopped up a lot of my old molds into all sorts of different sized pieces, and I'm just kind of doing a nice little puzzle-like layer. Then I'll pour another one to two inches of silicone, and then the same thing. Uh, put in a nice little layer of recycled molds and then I just keep doing that uh, until I completely fill the mold. And this whole process here is a little bit obsessive compulsive. I've done dump molds before uh, where I've literally just, no pun intended, dumped cups of this stuff in and poured silicone in and the molds have turned out perfectly fine. But this whole part of the process is uh, a part that I really enjoy so I just do the whole OCD thing here. I'm barely stabbing an X-Acto knife into each little piece and then setting it into the silicone and then twisting the X-Acto knife out. I try to make sure that each one of the little chunks is completely surrounded by silicone on each side and I also try to make sure that the little chunks don't actually touch the sculpture. So this is what it looks like after the first batch of silicone. And now that I know that 16 ounces fills it up to about this line, I can kind of guesstimate how much more I'm going to need to fill the entire box. So I wait about 15 minutes before I mix the second batch up. And this just allows the first half to kind of stiffen up a little bit and kind of lock all those little pieces in place. And then for the second batch it's the exact same thing as the first batch. A little layer of silicone, a little layer of uh, the mold pieces, another layer of silicone, all the way up to the top. Make sure to check the bottom of your mold box for leaks to make sure no silicone's leaking out. If it is, it's totally easy just to shove a little piece of clay in there and block it, or even give it a little bit more of a glue stick. I also like to make sure that I level the mold out before I pour the silicone in. This could really help you get a level pour when it's time to pour the resin. The Mold Star 15 has a pretty fast cure time of 4 hours. That means you need a minimum of four hours before you can open the mold up. My advice is to always let it cure overnight. There's this thing rubbers do called creeping. Even after it hits the cure mark, it doesn't completely plateau. It's still alive and moving around a little bit over here. This is where it creeps. And this is more of an issue with urethane rubbers, not so much of an issue with the platinum silicones. But if you let it sit overnight, it'll be completely cured and you don't even need to worry about it. And this is a bigger issue with two-part molds. You want your two-part molds to fit together super snug. So if one half of the mold creeps around a little bit, it's not gonna fit tight. Uh, when you pull the resin out, it might be deformed a little bit and it's just gonna uh, result in a little bit more cleanup when you're finished. 
uh, but like I said, it's not a huge deal with the platinum silicone rubbers. To remove the mold from the mold board, I'm going to slide this chisel underneath the bead of glue. And then I can just snap the whole thing off since it's only being held by a little bit of crazy glue. Then I pull the foam core box off of the silicone and now I have my one piece silicone block mold. I also like to clean up all these weird little flanges of silicone around the edges. And I do this with a razor blade just slicing a little strip off of each edge usually just on the top and the bottom as well as the one seam down the side where the foam core edges meet. And you can see here that it really will find the tiniest little space to seep into. I'm just going to cut this little piece out with the razor blade. So now we just have to slice this mold open here and here and try to follow those lines uh, that we drew on the sculpture and then the mold will split open we pop the piece out. So I'm using the scalpel and doing what's called a jeweler's right. cut. This is where you make a zigzag cut down the sides while trying to follow those lines uh, that were drawn on the sculpture. So after I pull that little slice of wood off, I can see where the lines on the sculpture are. I'm gonna start at that line and cut straight out perpendicular to this plane here because I want the mold halves to close together flat for a really tight seal. When I'm close to the figure, I like to do this small tight cut where I just wiggle the blade back and forth and it leaves these kind of uh, uh, little teeth that lock together. The further out I get, the bigger the zigzags get, um, which just give uh, some bigger and better locking teeth. So I start on the line and do some little zigzags. Then as I come out, uh, the zigzags get a little bit bigger. I always jump back and forth between the sides and just methodically work my way down. Doing this almost requires three hands, uh, two to pull apart the uh, mold and one to cut the mold with the scalpel. And that's where this uh, retractor thing comes in. If you're trying to open and cut this mold by yourself, this thing here is definitely a necessity. You stick this thing in the mold and crank it open. It locks automatically and then you grab your scalpel and do your scalpel thing. And so I just keep working my way down trying to keep the cut uh, straight and keeping in mind uh, that the cut will curve part way down until I feel like I can pull the piece out uh, without um, tearing the mold or damaging the figure. Last week I posted a video on this part that gets into all the obsessive little details. So if you want the 13 minute version of this, uh, you can click on the link right up here in the corner or you can check it out in the description. I think I'm going to make this the end of part one here uh, just to prevent an hour long video. So in part two, I will go over the resin casting process as well as cleaning up the resin and getting it ready for paint. You can always check out my work at stevefrere.com and at Instagram Steve Ferreira. And until next time, uh, thanks for watching.